welcome to the session greeting of the day in today's class we are going to see about the various actuating systems we are on the top of the various actuating systems of electrical actuating systems hydraulic actuating systems and pneumatic actuating systems in that in the electrical actuating systems we have seen about some dc motors in, in continuous with that we have to see about this ac motoring systems so there AC motoring systems. So what is this? We are going to convert this AC current into the rotation of a mechanical element. We need finally the actuating. We need finally the actuating systems we are doing for the help to help the mechatronics arrangements. Therefore, I need to have I need finally the output of mechanical action. So I am using this actuating system of AC motor. So here as in case of DC motor, what I am doing, current is passed through through the uh, coil generating a torque of rotation in such a way that has, uh, has been connected to the shaft and we are taking the output. But here we have uh, two conditions of similar of a stator and a rotor. The name itself says it is stator, it is a fixed one and the rotor, rotor which is going to rotate inside the cylindrical AC motors. The armature of a rotor is a magnetic unlike the DC motors and then the stator is formed by an electromagnet similar to it of a DC motor. Similarly those north pole south poles rotating action is going to happen. But if there we have a some brushless armature coils but here we have in the format of a cylindrical format where this is named as a center one of north pole south pole we are uh, named as a rotor and the fixed coils of here we have a stator material when this electric field of alternate current is supplied by the sinusoidal wave actions the alternating current is passed over there and therefore according to that the attraction of north and south poles and therefore the rotating happens here so the rotation will happen that is what the idea of this one so working principle, the rotor to be permanent magnet, we have taken for the rotor conditions as a permanent magnet. Current flows through the conductor energizes uh, magnets and develops the north pole and the south poles. And therefore, the strength of the element electromagnetic depends upon how much current we are supplying. The strength of the electromagnet generated in between this uh, rotor and stator is depend upon the how much current we are supplying. First half cycle, for the first half cycle, current flows in one direction, current flows in one direction and in the second half cycle, current flows in the other direction. Anyhow, this alternative current is keep on going to rotate, alternative current keeps on, first this will activate it and then this will activate it. So, and finally the cycle completed by rotation of the rotor. As AC voltage changes the poles also, alternately changes and therefore by these alternations we are going to rotate continuously. Disadvantages, the main limitations of AC motor over the DC motor is that uh, speed of the speed is more difficult to control. So here we have a simple uh, one north pole south poles and therefore when it is a speed controlling up to full complete 180 degree it should go here. So it, it is a little bit uh, difficult to control over that of the DC motors. So to overcome this in the AC motors it is equipped with the variable frequencies of drives but it is important the speed control comes together with the reduced power quality. So what I am doing and from here I am changing to from here I am changing to the next one of a synchronizer. From here one I am multiplying I am doing more. Instead of doing the 180 degrees I want to reduce those degrees of minimum shift angles. So synchronized motor is an AC motor which runs at constant speed fixed by the frequency of the system. It requires a direct current for the starting of the starting point then automatically it goes on rotating and has a low starting torque and hence suited for applications that start at a low load. What I am having here, see the rotor is at the center, this one, this rotor at the center, the rotor at the center which contains a multiple per permanent magnets, multiple permanent magnets I have and as usual the stator having equally over there. 
outside stator is going to supply the electrical field the magnetic field due to that magnetic field this rotor is going to attract and therefore due to attraction from here to it, it started to move and it started to move and it started to move and to keep on the rotation will occur it has two basic electrical parts namely that is what we know stator and the rotor in the stator the stator consists of a group of individual the stator consists of a group of individual wound electromagnetic arrangements in such a way that it forms a hollow cylinder so we have a wounded coils of a stator which makes the which makes the a hollow cylinder first inside the cylinder we have a rotor inside the rotor we have a shaft connections here etc so the stator produces stator produces a rotating magnetic field that is proportional to the how much with the frequency supplied this is about the stator it is rotating now inside a shaft to be rotated it means rotor to be rotated about the rotor the rotor is the rotating electrical component of which it contains a permanent magnet it also consists of a group of that is what the point it also consists of the group of permanent magnets in early cases for it, for the working principle we have used only north pole and south pole only one but here i am using multiple see i am using the multiples so likewise we can able to create so multiples are there so one will be north one will be south accordingly it it rotates so it also consists of a group of ferment magnets arranged in a cylindrical with the poles facing towards the stator the rotor is mounted on a motor so so likewise we can able to create so the working the stator is given a three phase supply as the polarity of the stator progressively change with magnetic field rotates and therefore therefore the rotor will follow the rotation with the magnetic field of the stator where the stator north pole south pole changes eh? this rotator is rotor is going to attract and then for when here it is activated as for example we can take eh? here the activation takes place and therefore this poles will be attracted here and similarly when this is activated again this will be attracted here and again when this is activated again it will be attracted here and therefore keep on keep on rotating so it's a simple method of rotation of the rotor so it's like which we can able to create so induction motors is also one of the other method when the induction motor are quite commonly used in the industry automation the synchronized motor or standard ports are bounded with the coil and the rotor is permanent magnet and is supplied with the current to create a fixed polarity of poles so that's a similar another more variant of induction motor also same contains the shaft at the center and iron core at this and also we have a stator at the rotor similar methods it has advantage as a simple design low initial cost and rugged construction is almost unbreakable the operation is a simple with less maintenance a simple with less maintenance as there is no brushes in the dc motor we are used brushes and brushes dc motors but here there is no brushes we are using or for this ac motors so there are a few advantages disadvantage is what the speed control of this motor is at the expense of their efficiency speed control is we have to include more rotor teeth means not for so for to be increased more such a way we can able to control the shift angles as the load on the motor increases the speed obviously is going down going to decrease load maintain constant if load increasing obviously speed decreases again we have to supply more current there the starting torque is as inferior when compared to the dc motor the starting speed or torque is lesser than that of the dc motor it means that current motor is so okay boss now i am coming to as of now we have seen about this actuating systems of dc motors and then the ac motors so here we have seen the brushless brushless here we have seen the synchronized and the induction so remaining we have to see now the remaining part you see stepper motor here i am taken the dc voltage i am giving the supply 
in stepped pulse wise um, the cycle the current supplied itself uh, given as a pulse on off on off in such a way we are giving the converts a dc voltage in the pulsed train so the train is nothing but it's a pulse i have given on off on off likewise i am giving the pulse actions as a train a pro it is a proportional to the mechanical rotation of the staff shaft what happens when the pulse is given as usual the stator rotator will be in contact of with respect to magnetic field and shaft started to rotate one plus one rotation second plus second pulse second rotation third pulse third rotation likewise it will happens so it acts as a both as an actuator first we are rotating acting and also as a position sensors where we have to stop those things at how many angles 90 or 30 or 45 where it we should stop step wise we can control it means uh, the shifting angles keep on reducing 180 90 45 30 we minimum 7.5 3 4 5 angles also it is possible to do so discrete motion of the stepper motor is possible therefore the idea for use with a digitally connected control system such as a microcomputer so we, now we are coming to the mechatronic system where the stepper motor is useful controlled by the microprocessor based computer systems the speed may be varied by changing the rate of pulse at train inputs. If the stepper motor needs a 45 pulses to rotate, for one rotation 45 pulses needed to rotate through the completion revolution, the input signal is 96 pulses per second or will make a rotation of a 120 revolution per minute. So likewise we can, they can able to do. So therefore we can see the stepper motor are capable of driving 2.2 kilowatt load with a stepping rate same with a stepping rate from 1000 to 2000 seconds 2000 per seconds in angular incremental from I am decreasing from 45 degrees down towards a 0.75 minimum of 1 degrees 0.75 degrees also possible by using the stepper motor arrangement by, by applying the pulsars by applying the Pulsary variables. So, likewise, we can able to do. So, here also some few variables are there, such as a permanent magnetic stepper motor and variable reluctance stepper motor. In the permanent magnet, I'm using the employ the permanent magnet for the rotoric conditions. For the variable, it is not have the permanent magnet. So, it's a small difference we are using, and here which is having the low speed and having the low torque, some differences are, but here it is having the high torque. The variable reduction motor, the centrical motor is made of a soft steel and has a four poles there, you see, having a four poles of one, two, three and four poles are there. And then it has a four rotor teeth, similarly for one, two, four rotor teeth, we are this the center is going to rotate, this is the rotor. So four having the four rotor teeth, each is placed at a 90 degree, each is placed at a 90 degree angles it has a four rotor teeth 90 degree apart of the six stator poles here we have a six stator poles here one to one it is having a six one two three four five six stators and four rotors are there electric argument of electric electromagnetic field is produced by activating the stator coils yes that we know and by the sequence it attracts the metal rotor so from when when we are when i'm activating let us, I am giving the name, this is 1, 2, 3, this is 1 and 1, after the south. So 2 and 2, 3 and 3. So when I am activating the 2, the rotor is going to rotate to 90 degree from here and it comes there, not 90 degree. Uh, this, the, the minimum gap of maybe 45 and then it comes to the second position. And again when the 3 is activated, it is going to activate from here to here and it is going to come and rotate and stopping here. So such a rotation can be possible that is what i have here when the winding are engaged energized in a sequence of see sequence of two three one and so on the motor will rotate in a 30 degree step angle how i'm activating i'm activating the same things here first i'm activating two three and one first i'm activating two three and one what happens so the north poles of south poles of this rotor is attracted towards here. The rotor is attracted towards here, this point. 
and then again it is attracted towards this point and again it is attracted towards this point and it continues so on so on it continues so therefore we can able to have the actuating rotation possible so such what that we can possible through this so the permanent magnet stepper motor we have seen about the variable reluctance what is the difference we have a permanent magnet here so rotor is a permanent magnet so here we have a permanent magnet of north pole so pole. here we have reduced the tooth also here we have more teeth the teeth are reduced and kept only one 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 operations and then as usual start up having the windings as usual supply we can able to have a change of angles so that is what a permanent magnet stepper motors so advantages of low cost and the ruggedness of their simply simple simplicity in constructions low maintenance are possible so these are the various uh, advantages of this stepper motor disadvantage of very low torque is very low torque and a limited speed therefore overloading is not possible during the overloading it affects the speed rate now we come to the servo motor the other name of dc ac stepper and servo motor simple construction we have to see the servo motor is a special electromagnetic device that produces a precise degree of rotation so i am converting this may be the dc motor it may be the dc motor or it may be the ac motor or it may be the brushless dc whatever it is which is a combined with the position sensors also it we are, we are naming the servo motor when it is connected to the feedback system and the position sensors and the computerized mechatronics arrangements there i am naming is a servo motor so what happens there servo motors are also called as controllable motors and this are involved in controlling the mechanical actions so here the simple this is nothing but a closed loop operations maybe the dc motor maybe the ac motor but what i am doing i am taking the feedback from there and i am giving to the error detector how much we need how much it is processed according to the input i am giving to the mechatronic system a closed loop system this figure shows a closed loop see the input i need 1000 rpms or maybe 100 rpms whatever it is so the amplifier gives the rotations how much we need and the servo motor started to rotate but 100 rpm not came only 90 rpm came then we received the feedback a closed loop system and the error detector and for 10 degree 10 rotation per minute is uh, lagging and then for again we are amplifying here this is uh, a 10 rotation per revolution per minute we are giving the more current to amplify and then later output we are receiving as a received as a as input given input equal to output we are getting through this servo motor feedback closed loop systems so that is what uh, we are using as a dc or ac in the use along with the control motors used as a control motors the servo motors are used in a closed loop system a reference input is sent to the servo amplifiers which controls the speed so simple the same sketch the device changes the mechanical motion into the electrical signals used for the user as a feedback therefore the feedback gives the again the control so you see now i want to mention you one thing of electro hydraulic systems as of now we have seen the electrical system and hydraulic system now i want to connect this both to perform a electro hydraulic system where it is used we have we have a piston it should be operated forward and reverse what i am doing here in this sketch you see from the pump i am taking the hydraulics a fluid and it is keep on going to the servo valve whether it should be forward action here it is going to be a it is to be a forward action and then it moves towards this and comes down what is the action takes place at the output we are going to rotate the shaft this is going to rotate the shaft now this rotation to be monitored where it is so this motor rotation feedback device is connected to the electrical control from the electrical control how much movement happens how much movement happens we have a servo motor to modify to check those things how much arrangement has been done after making these arrangements it is summarized it means error detected error detected and it is if it is required it is amplified 
and this amplified error signal is fed back to the again the servo valves therefore we can additionally supply the fluid again to make the proper movement of the shaft so this is things we have done through we have done through these uh, hydraulic systems therefore we have used the servo motor here to control how much movement is occurred this is maybe the position sensor servo motor is used as a was actuating and also use it to measure how fast, how much movement, how pushing is occurred. So the, this system, combination of electro and hydraulic systems are combined to perform a task. One side we have a hydraulic system, one side the output we have taken through the electro electrical controls of servo motors and those things and the feedback has been given again, feedback has been given again to the servo controller to control the shaft movement. So it is a combination of electro electrical and hydraulic systems so electro hydraulic system now instead of hydraulic i want to incorporate the pneumatic here you see instead of electro hydraulic i want to incorporate the electro electro pneumatic control system electro pneumatic control system this half of the part is the same where the output this output is taking the feedback of shaft movement shaft movement is taking the feedback and the electrical control how much movement on the servo motor made and it will give the summarizing, analyzing, error detection found and this found uh, how much to be added amplified and this amplification signal is given to the servo valve. This part is same. But instead of this hydraulic fluid supply, I am operating through the compressor. This air operated compressor I am doing. Then what happens? It is become a pneumatic electro hydraulic, sorry, electro pneumatic system. Instead of an electro hydraulic system, it becomes an electro pneumatic system. That is what electro electro pneumatic systems. So it is somehow the arrangement of pneumatic has been controlled by the electrical devices. So such things are all possible to make through this helpful for the mechatronics arrangements. So these are the few points we have to add here. Similarly, electrohydraulics or electro pneumatic or pneumatic hydraulic systems also possible output we can add as a hydraulic operator devices. Anything you can do here. So say I am comparing these two. Both are same, looks both are very similar. This part is similar. So this part is very similar. This part is very similar. I have incorporated here the compressor. I have incorporated here the pump. For this is about the, this is about the electro. This is about the electro hydraulic system. So this is about the pneumatic. Important one, right? So this, uh, what is the advantage of this servo motors now? Provides a high intermediate torque, high torque to the initial ratio, and high speed also possible. Position, less shifting angle at high speed. Work well with the velocity control. High velocity also not possible to measure. Available in all sizes. Quiet in operations. Smoothly operated, no sounds. Smoother orientation at a lower speed also. So these are some of the advantages of this eh? servo motors. So disadvantages, obviously when the rotation and the shift angle reduces, eh? the expensive it become more than that of the stepper motor. Shift angle reducing the servo motor, minimum 0.7 or less than that is possible. Require turning of control of loop parameters, a closed loop systems are possible. Not suitable for hazardous environment or in the vacuum, not possible. So some difficulties are there for the electrical supplies and those things. Excessive current can result in the excessive current can result in partial demagnetization of the DC type servo motors. So these things are to be keep in mind for what? Actuatics. 
So this is how I want to see small working conditions. If the current is, if there is an error, what happens? That error is fed directly to the amplifier. The word what I use, directly to the amplifier, which will be used to make necessary corrections. Yes, this will be used to make the necessary corrections in control actions, whether to increase to be amplified or reduce the speed controls. So that will be done. In many servo systems, both velocity, both velocity and the positions are monitored. So that is what we have taken the output there through the shaft movement there. What is the position? How far it is rotated? How velocity, how fast the hydraulic pumped in and pumped out the velocity of coming out of the piston of shaft. And where is the position? How far? How where is the position? How its angle it is rotated? So that also we have seen to the sonometer points the accurate speed. So velocity and this two. See? So how fast it is coming? The velocity and how what is the position here? What is the position here? How far it is rotated? So these things are all done by the servo systems. So the summary. So in, in actuating systems, we have seen about uh, the electrical, electrical actuating system. In the electrical actuating systems, we have seen about uh, DC motor, then about uh, the AC motor, then now go to the servo motors and this all these things generally the electrical controls and this electrical controls are incorporated with the electro hydraulic hydraulic electro hydraulic system systems to make the actuations actuated and also this useful for identification of velocity and position the remaining part of the subject we'll see you in the next session thank you